How awesome would it be to be able to sit across from Eric Clapton and pick his brain about life, guitar, and his musical journey all together? Well, today on the Acoustic Tuesday show, you're gonna get that chance because you'll be learning six lessons from Mr. Clapton himself. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 162. The Acoustic Tuesday show is designed to bring fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus learning about success stories from your fellow guitar geeks. This week, you'll be learning about Bob G and how his commitment to fun and focus put his guitar journey on a trajectory that he didn't even see coming. Along with Bob's story, I'm gonna be sharing with you some headlines from around the industry. One is a collaboration between a major guitar manufacturer and my favorite case company. I'm also gonna share with you some gift ideas. One's a stocking stuffer, the other is a major gift. And lastly, I wanna share with you a new song released by one of my favorite Montana singer-songwriters. We're gonna to get to all that in a bit, but first, let's learn from Eric Clapton. It is no doubt that he is a guitar legend, and I had the chance to forage through a wide array of interviews from various points during Clapton's career, and I came up with six pearls of wisdom that I want to share with you right now. Let's go ahead and dig right in. Lesson number six, develop your own personality. When asked about Clapton's influences on guitar and how he channels them, here's what he had to say. First of all, I was imitating. You know, to be honest with you, I was copying what I heard on record and trying to do it that way, and as time went by, um, when I started to meet my heroes, for instance, when I met Freddie King, when I met Muddy Waters, they didn't want to hear me play like them, mm. right? So they wanted to hear me play like me. And that's when I realized that I had to develop some kind of personality of my own with my mm. music. Certainly wise words from Mr. Clapton himself. Develop your own personality on the guitar. Certainly be influenced by other folks, but run it through your own filter and develop your own voice. Let's move on to the next lesson from Eric Clapton, and that is lesson number five, guitar is the best. And here's why Eric thinks so. I think it's so adaptable. You can yeah. carry it around, you can play it in your room, you can, you can amplify it and play it to thousands of people. You can play it with a slide, you can with a bottleneck, or and you can play rhythm, you can play lead, you can use it as accompaniment, you can use it as a voice. Mm. It has so many uses. You know, mm. I don't think I can't think of any other instrument that is that versatile. It's always reassuring to hear from a guitar legend that, well, they think the guitar is the best. Not to mention that they simply think that, but Eric also gave a laundry list of reasons as to why the guitar is awesome and so adaptable. Now, I always thought the guitar was the best, but to hear it from Eric Clapton, well, that carries just a little bit more weight. Let's go ahead and dig into lesson number four, and that is do your research. When you have a guitar hero, look at that person's influences. And when you do a little digging on that person's influences, do a little bit of digging on those influences and keep tracing the genre, the song, the style, all the way back to its root. In fact, this is exactly what Eric Clapton does. And he said as much during an interview when he was asked about his influences and why he plays the way he does. They look at the people that are immediately influencing them, like the modern guitar players, and they stop there. They think that that's where it started. So people that listen to me if they're listening to me now or they were listening to me in the 60s or 70s, they think I started it. Hmm. They don't choose to go beyond what I do and, and find out what I was interested in. And that's, that mystifies me because that's what I did. I mean, I heard Buddy Holly and I heard Elvis Presley and I, and I wanted to know what they were listening to. I wanted to know where it came from. So I, it became my obsession hmm. and my kind of scholarship in a way like being at school to find out where it started and I would go back you know through uh, Muddy Waters and uh, through all the people that came from Mississippi and Chicago and uh, and try and uh, examine it and learn every aspect of it and I think that's what is fascinating about guitar playing mm. and, and the blues and rhythm and blues and rock and roll it, you, there isn't a record made that has any soul that didn't come out of the blues. Mm. Moving on to the next lesson from Eric Clapton, and it turns out that Eric Clapton is more of a health nut than I originally thought, because lesson number three is that guitar is meditation. When asked about where he goes mentally on stage with the guitar, here's what he said. Where do you go when you're on stage and you say you're in control, but sometimes you close your eyes and... That's the other part. That's the part that really, when it comes, is really what it's all about. It's like... Um... 
I suppose it's almost like meditation for some people, in that um, I go completely blank and I leave my body, really. I leave, I leave the, you know, time. It just becomes, you know, infinite, a sort of infinite place to be. Afterwards, you think, well, where have I been? And you don't know and how I, long you've been. Yeah, I mean, I'm really only talking about a fragment of time. Okay, I have two more lessons from Eric Clapton for you, and both are vital to your guitar journey and will increase the health of your guitar routine. Lesson number two is to be humble. And I found two different occurrences in two separate interviews where Clapton was incredibly humble. One instance was when he talked about John Mayer and his playing ability, and Clapton simply celebrated how awesome he was. Here's what he said. And he cut all those tracks in about an hour first or second take, mm. and I was gobsmacked, <laughs> really. I mean, you know, I knew respect for John, because yeah, he's extremely gifted. I mean, his facility is phenomenal. He is a master. Uh, he doesn't even, he, I don't think he even knows how good he is. The second occurrence was when he was talking about the Crossroads Festival, and he was asked on whether or not he was nervous to play around such great guitar talent. And ultimately he said, well, yeah, it's kind of nerve-wracking, but also how cool it is to be surrounded with such amazing players. Here's exactly what he said. To know that I'm going to go on later in the evening after all these fantastic players have already had their say, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think, it, but I'm so happy to be there that it, 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 it overcomes the nerves, really. On to the final lesson from this guitar legend, and that is this. Lesson number one, music is healing. When Clapton was asked about the death of his son and whether or not that sparked the urge in him to drink again, here's what he had to say. It was so overwhelming, uh, I didn't have time for, to think about drinking. I went into shock. In a way, I, I became an emotional blank for a little while. And a drink only really comes up around extreme emotions. What I did was I just, when the emotions started to surface, I played them. And I thank God that music was there for me then, because that could have been a very dangerous point. The music helped you out of it? Yeah, I think so. There you have it, six awesome pearls of wisdom from none other than Eric Clapton himself. Let me give you a quick recap of those six lessons. Lesson number six, develop your own guitar personality. Lesson number five, the guitar is the best. Lesson number four, do your research. Lesson number three, the guitar is meditation. Lesson number two, be humble. And lesson number one, embrace the healing power of music. Now this brings up a question that I have for you. Has Eric Clapton taught you a lesson? Maybe a memorable quote? Maybe you caught an interview and it really resonated with you? If that's the case, let me know in the comments below. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Now this brings up a much larger topic on how to interact with your guitar heroes. Now, I'm not saying going out to lunch with your guitar heroes and how to talk to them, although that would be very nice. I'm talking about how you learn from your guitar heroes. So often the emphasis is on how to play exactly how they play. You look at how, what their fretting fingers are doing. You look at what their picking hand is doing. You look at how they play that one section of that one song and how you can do it and achieve the same tone. And I think that's a very fun part of your guitar journey. Don't get me wrong, but that's really only 50%. We can learn so much more from our guitar heroes when you actually listen to how they talk about the guitar, when you listen to their experiences with the guitar. A lot of times, our guitar heroes are like the elders of the guitar tribe. We can learn so much from their experiences, whether that means how they learn the guitar or their experiences in the music industry, or maybe they made mistakes that we can learn from now and we don't have to make the same mistakes. It's pretty incredible. So just know that when you sit down and you have a guitar hero and you're looking to learn from them, 50% of it is the playing and the other 50% is the wisdom that they've collected through the years. Now I want to introduce you to fellow guitar geek Bob G. Bob G just celebrated his fifth year at Tony's Acoustic Challenge, and we still keep him around even though he's a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. But in all seriousness, I have a unique perspective on Bob's guitar journey because I've seen the progress year after year after year. And I believe it's because of his commitment to fun and focus. Here's what Bob had to say upon reflecting on his guitar journey thus far. When asked where he started, here's what he had to say. 
I picked up the guitar early in retirement based on a promise to my wife and her hints slash reminders over our 46 years of marriage. Thank you, Marianne. I hadn't played since a brief attempt in high school and always knew I wanted to get back to taking it more seriously. Before joining, I brushed off some chords, got past sore fretting fingers, and experienced one scary attempt at playing a song in front of family. Embarrassing stage fright to the max. Also, I had a few private lessons and knew I needed more structure and an overall plan. That was the first three or four months before joining TAC in October 2015. It's pretty crazy to hear about someone's guitar journey and how it started five years ago. Which begs the question, where were you with guitar five years ago? Just think about it for a minute. Was the guitar on your radar? Had you even started yet? Were you just simply dabbling? Kind of an interesting reflection point. Let's go ahead and dig back into Bob's story and see how he's progressed. Here's what he can do now that he could never do before attack. Now he can play comfortably in front of his family and friends. He says the best is playing for my grandkids as they go to bed. They are the ultimate captive audience, happy to have someone in the room as they head off to dreamland and because they have no discerning musical taste at this point, they don't complain. Except when my now six-year-old grandson heard his name in Sweet Baby James and sat up screaming, I am not a baby. That lullaby is out of the set these days. He also says that he can now play at jams with his fellow TAC family and he does so with much less stage fright, which is pretty incredible. And he also says this, Playing with much less stage fright is one thing, but having the TAC family is a definite major plus in my guitar journey, and that would not have happened without Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Lastly, he wants to mention that before Tony's Acoustic Challenge, he had a limited view of his guitar journey, how slow it might be and where it might take him. Five years in, and it feels like my guitar journey has been supercharged and on a trajectory into the stratosphere, keeping in mind that I had no illusions of being a pro performer or anywhere near. My focus is to have fun with guitar and people around me. The fun already is beyond expectations and my only reservation for the future is to control my guitar distractions. There are so many shiny new guitar opportunities that could distract me from my next chance to enjoy playing with friends and family, including playing for my wife, best audience ever. My retirement has been so enriched by guitar and I give TAC tons of credit. TAC has really put a bright polish on my golden years. This is such an awesome story from Bob and just a great first-hand account. Now, as I mentioned before, I have a unique perspective on Bob's guitar journey because I've seen him perform at open mics through the years in person. And I've watched somebody who was relatively timid to get on stage, almost to the point where they couldn't play, to now somebody who is comfortable jamming with somebody else and playing an open mic and having a blast doing so. So congratulations on your fifth year at Tony's Acoustic Challenge, Bob, and congratulations on really fulfilling your dreams as a guitar player, as a guitar geek. And I love tracking your guitar journey because I can see that your commitment to fun and focus is paying off big time. I mean, to hear that the guitar is enriching your life, enriching your golden, your golden years, is something that is really heartwarming and something that, well, it's just worthy of celebration. So congratulations, Bob, and uh, best of luck to the Penguins in the upcoming NHL season. By the way, have you all seen the new reverse retro jerseys that they just released? They look pretty darn cool. I have to say, I haven't seen any in person. I've just seen pictures. Next up, I have a guitar snarl to share with you from Weldon Spring, Missouri, and it's brought to you by Acoustic Tuesday viewer Paul K. And he has this to say. Tony, I enjoy watching your show every opportunity I get. Attached is my guitar snarl photo. It has several of my acoustic guitars, but not all. It also does not display my electric guitars, banjo, and mandolin, but is a reasonable representation shown from left to right. A Gibson Advanced Jumbo, a Takamini Pro, a Taylor 416 CE, and that's Paul in the middle holding a Dobro that his dad purchased when he was alive in about 1975. Next, a Guild 412. Next, a 1956 Martin D28. This one has a story. He says, I won this guitar in a bet with my grandfather. He said if I won this talent contest, he thought I had no chance of winning, he would buy me any guitar I wanted. Guess what? Well, it looks like Paul certainly won that bet. Next up, we have a Martin D41, and then finally, a Zager CAD80. Well, Paul, thank you so much for submitting your guitar snarl, and if you want to be like Paul and have your guitar snarl featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show, 
please do so. It's very easy. Head on over to AcousticTuesday.store and pick out your favorite guitarsonal shirt. Have it shipped directly to your door. Once you receive that shirt, go ahead and put it on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And then lastly, head on over to AcousticLife.tv and submit it using the submit link in the top menu. You can click on that, upload your picture, and describe your guitarsonal just like Paul did. And of course, then you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show, a future episode of the Acoustic Tuesday show, I should say. All right, next up, I've got a couple of news items that I want to share with you. These are pretty quick, but things that I think you need to know about. First up, a collaboration between Gibson Guitar and Calton Cases. Yes, indeed, one of the largest guitar manufacturers in the US and one of the coolest case manufacturers, in my humble opinion, got together and created a line of custom Calton cases for Gibson guitars. They feature that classic brown exterior with the classic Gibson pink interior. It's pretty darn cool. So if you find yourself in the market for a Gibson, you're at a Gibson dealer, go ahead and ask them about those cases. If you happen to walk out with like, I don't know, a Southern Jumbo, a J45, J200, LG00, you get the idea. Check out those cases. They're pretty darn cool. Not only do they look cool, they function incredibly well. Next up on my list is a stocking stuffer item. The holidays are around the corner, and if you have a bluegrass lover in your life, you're gonna wanna check out these bluegrass trading cards released by Bluegrass Breakfast. Now, I found these guys on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following tack.guitar on Instagram, please do so. I post a lot of fun stuff on there. And as I'm finding out, Instagram's a pretty cool place to discover things. Nonetheless, Bluegrass Breakfast offers these bluegrass trading cards, and it features some incredible artists on these trading cards, some cool illustrations. Kind of think uh, R. Crumb, the way that he did the Legends of Blues, but this is done in the bluegrass vein and very, very cool. They also offer prints of each of the illustrations, not to mention an incredible line of t-shirts that I think are absolutely hilarious, taking on kind of classic bluegrass motifs, but uh, twisting them a little bit. Very cool stuff. My favorite one is the Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys done in a death metal font. It's probably my favorite. Uh, nonetheless, check out Bluegrass Breakfast on Instagram. It's really tough to say. It's kind of a mouthful. Next up is another gift idea, but this gift idea is for somebody that's near and dear to your heart, or me, if you wanna buy a gift for me. Uh, this comes courtesy of Heartbreaker Guitars. They just recently reviewed a Huss and Dalton single-o that is mind-blowing. It happens to be their Heartbreaker of the Month, so let's check it out. Thanks, Tony. Hey, Acoustic Tuesday fans, it's Brendan from Heartbreaker Guitars, along with Toby the Beagle, bringing to you the Acoustic Tuesday Heartbreaker of the Month. Tony, we've never done a Hudson Dalton guitar as a Heartbreaker of the Month. Hudson Dalton is one of my favorite companies. These are such good people and extremely talented luthiers. Let's take a look at this custom single O. This is the Hudson Dalton serial number 5485 single O. Okay, it's got an Italian spruce top, a sinker mahogany back and sides. That's a mahogany neck with an ebony board and open back Waverly's. It's got a 24.9 inch scale length. That's a one and three quarter inch nut. And the string spacing is two and five sixteenth at the saddle.
That was Mike Romano on the guitar. Great job, Mikey. Anyway, Tony, Acoustic Tuesday. Guys, thanks for watching the Heartbreaker of the Month. I'm Brendan. This is Toby, and we'll see you guys next month. Tony, back to you, my friend. Huge thanks to Brendan over at Heartbreaker Guitars for sharing that guitar with us. If you happen to be interested in it, go ahead and reach out to Brendan over at Heartbreaker Guitars. They have some incredible instruments in stock, and that is one of the awesome ones. It's one of the awesomer ones. It's a really damn good guitar. Let's just put it that way. I've got a couple more pieces of news for you. Uh, this next one's a little bit of a guilty pleasure. I've recently discovered the story podcast entitled Make It Up As We Go. And it's about the behind the scenes songwriting scene of Nashville. And it's very, very interesting and very, very addicting. I'm usually not one for a story podcast, but this one caught my attention and now I am eagerly awaiting the next episode. Let's have a look at the trailer. My name is Scarlett Burke and I am the co-creator and executive producer of Make It Up As We Go. You know, I think so many people wonder what actually happens behind the scenes in Nashville. How do songs get written? How do songs become hits? The reason why we decided to go with the podcast to tell the behind the scenes story of making music is uh, from a conversation that I had with my business partner, Jingle Jared. I was telling him that I send my dad the unedited work tapes from Sessions so that he can hear the conversations and the stories that unfold as we write the song. And then we realized that maybe more people would want to hear that story. Okay, one more piece of news for you today, and it comes from a Montana-based singer-songwriter named Riddy Armin. I featured Riddy some episodes back on the Acoustic Tuesday show, and she just released this new song, and it's one that you absolutely have to hear. It's named Barbed Wire. Let's check it out. Many, many thanks to a song catcher for capturing that performance, incredible video footage, and just overall awesome to hear new music from Riddy. If you're interested in listening to more of Riddy's songs, please head over to Bandcamp and look up Riddy Arman, R-I-D-D-Y-A-R-M-A-N, or you can check her out on YouTube. There's some notable performances there as well. Now, last I was in contact with her, she said she'd have a new album coming out at the end of this year or early next year, and as soon as I have more information, I will certainly share that with you. All right, that wraps up the Acoustic Tuesday show for this week, but let's take a sneak peek and see what we'll be talking about next week on the show. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we'll be talking about the single most important and easy thing you can do right now to supercharge your guitar journey. Yes, indeed, it's important, it's easy, I just don't have the time to share it with you on today's show, which is why I'll be talking about it next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please head on over to AcousticLife.tv. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, your guitar progress, however you define it, is only as good as your guitar routine. So take the time and invest in your guitar routine and reap the benefits from this day forward. Thank you again for being a guitar geek, and remember, guitar geeks unite. I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers.